Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the number one enemy of translucent plastic. It's too late. Random review is about to begin. Before we begin, thank you very much to Sven the Kaiju for joining the Patreon campaign. Thank you very much for the contribution and helping out with the channel, keeping everything alive. Very appreciated. If you'd like a shout out of your own, cost a buck or two a month. Not asking for much to make me say something silly. Uh, and I thank you very much for the support. Uh, and yeah, appropriate that it's a Kaiju name because look what came in the mail today. This kind of derailed all of my video plans for the day because we got to talk about this. So this is the Super Japan Hero Universe Project, otherwise known as the Shin Universe Robo, celebrating, uh, you know, ce celebrating the uh, the director of Shin Kamen Rider, uh, Hideaki Anno, and his successful accomplishment of capturing all of the biggest franchises in Japan to do one whole project from. So, he's the guy who created Evangelion, he got to do Shin Godzilla, and that went over so well that he also got to do Shin Kamen Rider and Shin Ultraman, because the man is a massive tokusatsu nerd. So, this is the commemorative thing, and it's a glorious mess of Japanese icons, and I had to own this, I had to own this, so... We're going to go over it. I will excuse me if this is going to be a very long review because there is a ton to cover. I want to be comprehensive, but I will try. I will try to keep it to something watchable. So first off, quick look at the packaging. Beautiful shot of the combined robo there. All the heroes along the side. I say hero because that's how they market it. I don't think Shin Godzilla is much of a hero, uh, but yeah. Very cool packaging. Uh, they don't really need to do anything because this was a direct-to-order online sale thing. So they don't need a marketing piece like a box that, you know, you know, like this. Doesn't really need to sell it. You already bought it. They still put this gorgeous piece of artwork on the back. That's going to be someone's desktop wallpaper, I am certain. Exceptionally cool. Okay, so I don't want to talk about the box too long. We're going to go in segments now, so let's start talking about the toys that came in this box. We're going to start with the easiest component to cover, and that is Shin Kamen Rider. So, of course, my biggest franchise in this set gets the short end and gets the smallest figure. But then again, when all the other characters in this universe are gigantic, well, you got to get what you have to get. So, uh, no real option here. So, the toy itself... Just under three inches long, maybe closer to two and a half inches at total length. And it is just a nice little representation of Shin Kamen Rider riding on the motorcycle. It does have a little transparent kickstand to actually stand up. And the wheels do actually have some rotation to them, but it's not a free spinning wheel. So don't expect to like cruise it along your floor or anything. It's a decent little representation. It's well painted. It gets the detailing across. Like, even the stuff you're not supposed to really see because of the pose. Like, you know, the belt is fully painted on the belly, even though the motorcycle completely covers that. You got the exhaust done up nicely. The colors are about as spot on as I could hope for. Yeah, it's nice. There's his muffler. And there's his little wing things on the back. So, yeah, it's not a bad, like, it's, you know, obviously simplified, but, you know, it's not a bad job of just making a, a little common Rider for this set. So, not a whole lot to say. It's just a common Rider on a bike. Let's get to something a little bit more uh, substantial. Shin Ultraman is where things in this set start to surprise me because something that... Uh, something that Bandai, I don't think was very good at, was conveying just how articulated some of these figures actually are and how, like, fully robust they are. So, we have our Shin take on Ultraman here. It's a very classic style of Ultra, looking very good in his red and silver colorings, as well as those, you know, bright, you know, pale yellow eyes. He looks very, very nice. You know, I'm not... A huge Ultraman fan. I've start. I've been watching Blazar here and there. I'm starting to grow some appreciation for it, but the old school stuff never quite caught me. So it's not a bad look, though. He looks pretty nice to me. 
silver is all over this thing. Like the the paint is just loaded on this guy in order to get all of his colors right. So he ends up looking very shiny as is appropriate for the character. What took me off guard was just how articulated this guy was. We've got a ball jointed head that lets you tilt left and right, move back and forth. Lots of range there. Very surprised. Very surprised. We have universal shoulders. Universal shoulders, full movement there. Bicep rotation, did not expect. Didn't expect the double jointed elbows. There is wrist articulation as well. Nothing in the waist, but we do have some universal hips. They are quite restricted, unfortunately, but that is kind of required. Uh, the legs have to be a little bit stiff for how this guy combines. No thigh swivel, but we do have a knee bend. Again, it's intentionally limited for uh, things that have to come later. But the ball joint in the ankle does do some work if you want to get him into some really cool poses. So, aside from that, there's also accessory work that we can talk about here. Uh, so, for starters, the hands actually pop off. And you can actually swap them out for flat hands. So, we we'll do this really quick here. And that will let us get into some more familiar Ultraman poses where we can start firing off beams, etc., doing all the fun stuff. So you can get him to actually just act like a normal Ultraman figure. Now, if you want, we can pull in the effect part. So his beam is included. There is a display stand specifically for it. Not a bad representation. The little line sculpted in there helps immensely. So we can go ahead and pose him together yeah and if you just want a little action piece for your ultraman shelf there you go you can you know he can pull off the classic so i'm actually kind of surprised for something that is basically a component of a megazord they tried pretty hard here let's look at ava unit one and no surprise that anno's baby got a lot of love and attention so the deco on it is actually really really nice I'm honestly not one for Evangelion, but I can admit when something just straight up looks good, and they did a really good job on the figure itself. There's lots of different paint going on on it to make sure this is done correctly, not just the purple and the, for the plastic, and then all these green highlights, but the black dividing it up as well. Little hits of orange, little hits of gold, little hits of red. This thing's pretty loaded. They made sure to get as much of the detail in as they absolutely could. Head sculpt crazy on Ava's in general. Uh, this one, no different. Of course, no different. I will tell you, very soft plastic for the horn to prevent that from breaking. The big wings on these big things. Yeah, those are solid plastic. Now... Uh, the combination requires you to pull those off and on at times, and it feels like there's just enough give to actually come off. So I'm a little bit worried about them, but you just be careful with them and you should be okay. Uh, he has the exact same range of articulation as the Ultraman. Uh, ball jointed neck, universal arms, the biceps, the double jointed, the wrist swivel, thighs, same restrictions to the thighs and knees, ankle. This part also is actually ball jointed too, so if you twist the ankle like so, you can move that and cover it up and make it look more natural. The only added point of articulation from the Ultraman version, since they're doing the exact same thing and the combination makes absolute sense, they'd be doing the exact same thing here. And they uh, continue to do the exact same thing because they also have the different hand swaps. And on him, you get open hands, which... Yes, this is going to lead to using another effect part. Once again, with its own stand, you have his shield, his little, his little force field. So you can also throw that up as an option as well. Here, let me get into some kind of pose where this looks correct. A little bit hard to do correctly on these figures. Because you don't, you don't really have like the wrist articulation to really make the pose correct. But you can get it close enough. You know, and if you're just going to be posing these around for a little bit. Or having him face off with Ultraman, one or the other. Perfectly fine by me. 
Looks like it'll do just fine doing that. I will point out the, the proportions on these, because of how they have to combine, do get a little bit weird. You know, if I bring in Ultraman, you can definitely tell on him, those legs are a little thick. Uh, Ultraman, don't skip leg day in the Shin universe. Uh, that is unfortunate because you have to uh, actually combine and actually have the bulk to become a leg at some point for Shin universe Robo. Uh, I definitely think even though he's supposed to be a scrawny design, the Ava is actually pulling the look off a little bit better. If I'm going to be uh, honest here, out of the four, probably looks and functions the best out of all of them. And again, it's Anno's baby. Of course, it was given the highlight in this set. And now we move on to the big guy himself, Shin Godzilla. The centerpiece of the entire combination, the most legacy character amongst all of them. And it's the Shin version. Of course it is. I'm going to be up front right now. Uh, the Shin Godzilla, not my favorite incarnation of the character. The tiny arms and bug eyes never really did it for me, but what the character is capable of doing in fiction is terrifying, and I did like Shin Godzilla for it. So, still happy. I've not had a toy of this version of Godzilla, so nice to actually have it. You can see it is a lot of rough scaling texture all the way across the toy. You get little metallic red highlights there at the tip of the tail as well as in the spines. It does give a pretty menacing look. The spines have been simplified a little bit. You can see where in between them there is added plastic to make it a little bit more solid. So you're not going to have to worry about these like snapping or breaking or anything. The plastic is a little bit soft, so you will, uh, you will avoid breakage if this thing does fall. So good on you. You can see some exposed engineering here, but... Uh, one thing about the charcoal black plastic is it does do a decent enough job of hiding it. Uh, what cannot be hidden is, of course, how Godzilla looks. And that is entirely intentional. If you've never seen the Shin version of Godzilla, yes, he's supposed to be bug-eyed and kind of like creepy staring at everything. Uh, you do have articulation in the mouth, and the paint job on the mouth is there. So you can attach, like if you have a laser beam effect of some kind, uh, feel free to include it in this figure. He doesn't get an effect part, because I feel like he has to do the bulk of a lot of the engineering in this set. A little bit of airbrushing and uh, panel detail to make that chest look accurate too. So overall, not a bad job. He does have an oddity to him that is a little bit annoying. Uh, that gap in between the shoulder and the actual arm. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you now, there really isn't a reason for this gap to exist. Uh, it doesn't help with the combination in any way. It just feels like a weakness of the engineering, honestly. So it's a little bit unfortunate. I feel like that could have been done a little bit better. So it's a minor blemish that you probably wouldn't have noticed or cared about if I didn't point it out to you. Have fun. Beyond that, yeah. You got what would be elbow articulation here. Then he has motion in. You have... Some ratcheted joints in the hips. A little bit of outward movement to have a more natural stance. You have a little bit of knee that is on a heavy ratchet. And then, uh, it's not on a ball joint. It's a rocker and then just a uh, peg holding the foot on. So you have rotation and tilt there as well. Godzilla, outside of his tail, don't really need a whole lot of articulation. But it's there for those who kind of want it. Uh, and just to get this out of the way, because I forgot to do this for these two, you can go ahead and tell uh, Godzilla coming in just over six inches and then Ultraman right on the money. So about normal size action figures for these sets outside of the Kamen Rider. So there you've got the individual figures. It's time to combine. So for Godzilla's role in this, we are going to have to separate quite a few parts. Uh, arms don't really have to do anything too much. We will have to flip those components out. Let's see, the spines, those have to go. Tail, that has to go. Uh, the feet also have to go. So you're just left with this uh, husk of a Godzilla. Don't worry, all intentional. Going to go ahead and fold this down and kind of accordion all of that together so the head points straight out. 
Uh, there's detail pieces to do as well, but as you're manipulating and transforming this, you're going to close them back up just in normal handling. So we're going to go ahead and leave those off and let's get to some of the other components. So let's do Ultraman next because this is uh, one of the easier ones. Well, they're all easy and now there's nothing terribly complex to this. Rip Ultraman in half. It's not easy instruction if you're a kaiju, but if you're a human playing with a toy, it's easy enough. Uh, you're going to see these little pegs on the inside of his leg. Go ahead and flip those out. Well, try not to pop the ball joint as you move this leg hinge 90 degrees and it will snap into its new position. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. You'll see the ports those pegs are going to be for. And then just go ahead and snap everything together. You're going to get three different pegs, including this one here at the bottom, to all snap together and try and form as solid of a leg as possible. The pegs themselves are a little bit smaller than I would like, but you can get them to hold together. Um, there's nothing securing this part as far as like making a solid leg, but don't worry, it's not going to hurt it as much as you would expect it to. All right, so with the legs done, we go to the top of Common or Common Rider. Uh, we go to the top of Ultraman. Go ahead and open up his back like so. Flip out the forearm of the combined mode. We'll go ahead and flip out the hand while we're here as well. For this, make sure this peg is folded all the way down into his midsection, and then you get the uh, the option to fold the arm. Well, the option you just have to. Uh, go ahead and fold the arms like so. Use that double jointed elbow to compile. To co to compile. I'm losing it right now. Uh, to collapse everything together, get this nice little tight bundle of arms inside his back. Now I'll let you close that up. Uh, Ultraman forms the right arm, so go ahead and turn his head this way. And there you go. So that part is done. For Ava, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but first. We do need to get these shoulder components off, which, as I said, these are a little bit tight. So I'm a little bit nervous about taking them on and off too many times. But as you can see, they can just yank straight off. Go ahead and do the exact same thing on here. So for this, along with the feet, you're going to have to rotate those extra panels so that they line up with the toe. And that's going to let you fold them up and... Uh, get everything as flush as possible go ahead and unfold those tabs like so so it should look like that once you're done open up the legs again and we're going to do the exact same thing you're going to find those two pegs go ahead and flip them out as again they are small fingernails actually help in this case so if you haven't trimmed up in a while good news you can play with your toy easier all right so exact same way it's all tightened up and then we can go ahead and go to the second. I will point out, this is going to work best if you use just the standard closed fist. So if you left the open ones on, on either of the arm units, go ahead and uh, make sure those are popped correctly into place. Let's see, once again, fingernails and thumbnails are a wonder on this toy. So the exact same process, make sure that peg is flipped down or you're not going to have the clearance to get everything inside. Simple enough process here. Yep, and Ava's forming the left arm, so go ahead and turn his head this way. All right, so that's all done. Which, by the way, we also need to take everything else off the stand, so make sure you've done that as well. Uh, the front part of that is going to come off like so. These are going to be separate parts later on. And then we get to the common Rider portion. Uh, and I will form the head. Go ahead and take common Rider into a, uh, a stunt rider situation. Open up the rear. The rear is going to double hinge. And then the bulk of the bike is also going to double hinge down. Make sure this little peg clears inside the gap here. Uh, so if you don't have the angle for that, make sure you rearrange and work with that double hinge until you've got the right angle to get that in smoothly. All right, with those components folded up like so, go ahead and take the front wheel and fold it all the way back. Uh, 
It's going to fold up into a spot where Kamen Rider will be able to sit down on the rear wheel. And that's going to reveal the face of the giant Robo. And with that done, all we really need to do is combine. So, we have to work with the legs first. Now, for these, we're just going to go ahead and attach uh, all of Shin Godzilla's feet. Uh, where is his correct one? All right. So, again, you're forming the left side uh, with Ava. So, make sure that you're using the Godzilla for the left side, at least the right, you know, for that foot. Do the same thing over here, except he's going to be the right side. Uh, you can really just, you have to just think about your own feet. Like, that's where the pinky is going to be. That's where the toe is. So, just kind of line it up like that. This is all peg in assembly. Nothing, no, like no big snap or any kind of spring loaded thing. So go ahead and attach the legs like so. Uh, while we're here messing around, these parts for the Ava need to go onto, uh, well, the shoulders we flipped out of Godzilla. It's again where they have just enough room to kind of clear and snap into place. All right, we'll finish combining Ava and Ultraman. That one goes on that side. This one goes on this side. Very, very nice. Need to get Kamen Rider attached to, and this part I don't like. So, on top of Godzilla, you're going to flip out a very tiny little ball joint right there, and that's going to connect to a socket underneath the head. Now, I've not yet been able to get these to combine in a way that felt good it always feels like the ball joint is just barely seated in and then um flexing it or turning it too many times is going to make the head pop off it's not a very secure connection i would have just preferred a peg um yeah it just feels like i'm not getting the ball joint on there but you know tight enough but there really isn't any more room it doesn't go any further than that so once the head is attached, be a little bit careful with it and be prepared to put it back on. All right. But with that out of the way, we now have to open up the tail. Go ahead and make sure it's uh, fully extended like so. The tail itself is going to fit onto this sock, like this connection point at the top of the back. So make sure uh, it's like you get that U-shaped groove to plug straight in. Uh, you can only really plug it in one way, because the parts only fit in that direction. And once all that combination is done, now you have to attach the effect parts. This one is another little tricky spot. I try to get uh, try to get this open shield to line up on Shin's neck. There is a little groove, just like a little spot for a very small peg on the back of Godzilla's neck. And then these two pegs on the side will fit into the uh, the pin, uh, the little pin holes right there. So we're going to go ahead and put that on like so. Make sure you get the top one first, or else you're not going to have the clearance. And then just kind of like leverage the bottom two in, like so. Now, all that done, now we can get the decorative stuff out of the way. The panels open up in the groin. Yes, you have to mess with Godzilla's groin. I'm sorry. And then the panels on the side open up. Gives you a little bit more color. And that is going to be our combined mode. Our fully assembled Shin Universe Robo, which I need to refocus for. The combined form for this mess of Japanese icons is one of the more complicated looking Megazords you are ever going to see in your life, and it is a glorious thing. Oh my god. The fact that it works at all is kind of incredible, because this is not supposed to exist. It's absolutely not supposed to exist, and yet, here we are. Uh, the Shin Universe Robo is complete. The legends are true. So, uh, let's see. How tall are we standing here? I actually haven't measured it in this mode. We are measuring... About nine and a half inches at the top of Common Rider's head. 
not too bad it's about the standard size of like a dx megazord out of japan just like the the generic base form of one and it's actually taking from the more modern uh concept for them because it's actually more uh it's, it's more uh articulated than i expect these things to be so i mean just to show off the articulation range we have a bit of a butterfly effect in the shoulder it can go backwards Beyond that, it does have universal, like, faux universal motion. You know, where it's a hinge and a swivel, kind of trying to recreate it. You also do have a functioning elbow, as well as wrist swivels on both sides. You have the neck, which again is ball jointed, but like I said, comes off very easily. So make sure you can pop that back on. Sometimes it's easier just to pop it off and reposition it the way you want and then pop it back on which is not my preference but you know you work with what you got there's a waist rotation that wasn't even available as godzilla all the parts were in the way there is a waist rotation to this toy and there goes the head again she's common rider is just like the problem child of this entire combination aside from the size doesn't match the rest uh see he just He's a solo act. He wants to go off riding on his own. The thighs from Godzilla work here too. Uh, but you also have the knee for Godzilla to work with, which is ratcheted. You can actually use the knees of this form as well in order to get some deeper knee bends. Gives this leg a very weird curve shape, but nothing about this combiner is not weird. So work with whatever joint you want in this case. I'd say the same about uh, the the pelvis actually working like a kind of ankle rocker back and forth but you also have it left and right as well as the swivel as well so this is actually you know for something kind of in you know impersonating a megazord it's actually capable of quite a few poses which is actually pretty cool to see it's actually you know still somewhat rare to get you know a mega a combining mecha out of bandai that has this level of posability and now we get to some of the issues with this toy. So, as you've seen, the tail wing does not like to stay in. Uh, just with even moderate play and posing, it can shake out very easily. And it feels like it clips in very tight and very solid, but it almost either works its way out, or you know, it's just like the slightest provocation is going to make it pop off. That's unfortunate. Also for as much as going on here there's no heel spur nothing flips out from godzilla's feet in order to give any kind of rear support to the weight which does make me a little bit hesitant to keep him in any complicated poses i always feel like he has to be a little bit forward heavy or forward leaning or else he's going he's absolutely going to tip back he really wants to tip back right now there is a way to counterbalance the weight um aside from just you know working with the joints and getting the balance correct so let's go ahead and take the spines from godzilla there is yet another little peg that has to be flipped out please have thumbnails for this uh yep make sure you, they are nice and strong because this will rip a few off if you are uh, not careful all right but once the handle is flipped out you can go ahead and take that ultra beam and attach it to godzilla's spines and that creates a pretty nice sword for this combination. All right, we're going to mount it right there on his right arm. And that's going to complete the look, at least as far as, you know, standard weaponry goes. We also still have the shield, or barrier, which can plug onto Ava. So he also has a buckler-style shield mounted on his left arm. And that's going to give us... A very well armored look it's a nice way of reusing a lot of the spare components and he is again looking really good with everything going on I actually really like using Godzilla's spine as the handguard and the blade being the ultra beam it's a pretty clever way of doing things I will also point out that one of the stands has a groove right there at the top which in if I had this posed correctly would be able to hold the weight of the saber so it's not weighing on the joints of the toy. Nice little touch by Bandai. But like I said, uh, Shin Universe Robo, 
as ludicrous as it is, and it's incredible that they actually managed to do this and pull it off and make it look so good, it does, unfortunately, have its issues. Uh, I really needed some kind of heel spur to help his balance. I really need that tail to be able to plug in better. I need Common Rider to be able to plug in better. This is close to being ideal. And for something that was over $200 to obtain, uh, it's over 20,000 yen in Japan even, this should be perfect. And this really feels like there's design flaws that should not exist. And it's kind of unfortunate. Because this is probably the only time this is something like this is ever going to happen. Remember, uh, Common Rider is a Toei production. Uh, Evangelion is uh, Gainax. You have Godzilla, who's Toho. You have Ultraman, who is uh, Super Raya. Four different competing companies had to agree to allow this thing to exist. And to get that again is probably highly unlikely. It's one reason why I wanted this set so much, even if I'm not as familiar with, like, you know, a, something like uh, Evangelion. It's still an incredible achievement as far as just Japanese pop culture toys go, and it's just an absurd creation. You know, like I said, I really, really do like this, but as a toy reviewer, as someone who has to identify and focus on the faults of a toy sometimes... It does have a few things that really should have been done better for the price. So, those are the thoughts on it. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy piece. Hopefully this helps a few out, because I'm sure the aftermarket on it is going to be insan insanity. Uh, but, I hope it helped, or I hope you enjoyed. Either way, I will see you next time.